Back of the engine, timing chains are back here. I mean, I get it, I guess. You know, you don't want anybody working on it except guys that can, you know, drop an engine out. But, uh, you know, it wouldn't have changed the configuration to put them in the front. But man, everybody talks about this. How insane is this? You gotta pull an engine to deal with the timing chains. Yeah, we got some metal in here. That looks like part of the uh, oil control ring. This stuff here is a little bigger. That looks like part of the piston, maybe. More oil control ring. Yeah, that's definitely ring there. That that looks like uh, like top ring, don't it? Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get the head off. Okay, so we pull the head off. Can't see very much, and uh, so we're gonna whip it over. Whoa, look at this, we got more. Oh, more, more, more. Yeah, that's definitely a piston ring, man. Look at down here in this oil pump pickup. Holy smoke, man. We're gonna find all kinds of interesting stuff. It just keeps coming. All right, let's get this off and see what we got, man. That's definitely an oil control ring. You know, you wanna be like Alejandro. Let me show you what I mean by that. Oh, piss, piece of the piston. Let me show you what I mean by that. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Alejandro is the man, but let me explain something. I don't know how much money you're spending on student debt for a job that's gonna make you $50,000 a year when you graduate in four years, but you could be Alejandro here and clearing 80 grand a year by the time you're 23. Booyah. So let me show you something here. See how this has got carbon? It's all dark in the area. And this is all dark here, a lot of carbon. But do you see how this here, we call that oil wash. Now, if that was a blown head gasket, it would be steam cleaned. It wouldn't be brown like that. It would be, it would be as clean as the aluminum here. But this is oil wash. So if you ever pull a plug out or you bore scope a hole and you see that, you're burning oil up through the rings. That's what's causing that, just a tip. Okay, everybody, I wanna talk about LSPI. Had to think about it, low speed pre-ignition and uh, what, it, what happens, and this is what happens. We blew a piston completely apart. It didn't damage the cylinder wall, which is nice, because this is a nickel seal block. We really can't do anything with these holes, except I'd have to re-sleeve that. I can do that, but the cylinder wall is gonna be okay. Here's part of the stuff that we found in the oil pan. The control ring, part of the second ring, pieces of the piston. This happens under low speed load, normally when the engine is cold. So this is like you're taking off, the oil is not warmed up, so what happens? The oil is thick. You want your API rating to have an SP in it. Sam Paul, you want to have an SP rated oil. That oil is designed for direct injected engines. That's, that's how this happens. This bottom ring here, this is the oil ring. These holes here are designed that oil splash from the crank going around and around and around and around. It's splashing up on the inside of the piston and it's allowing oil to get up on the cylinder wall. This second ring here, this ring here, is called the oil control ring. Now let me show you how thin this ring is. This ring has no tension on it. It's very flimsy. Boop, 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 boop. That really doesn't make a lot of tension on the cylinder wall. That tension on that ring doesn't really change with temperature. But what does change with temperature? Your oil viscosity. Oil super thick when it's cold. This is why we're finding this problem. That's why you want to make sure that you have an SP API grade oil. The oil is getting onto the cylinder wall like it's designed to. It's supposed to be scraped off by this oil control ring. Well, during cold drivability when you first start it up, the oil is so thick, it's kind of like, uh, you know, if you put molasses syrup in, in your microwave for 30 seconds, it, it pours like water. If you put it in the fridge, you know, it won't even pour out of the bottle. It's the same idea. So that thick oil gets past this second ring and it gets up here to the top ring, the compression ring. That's where your problem happens. The oil interacts 
with the fuel that has not atomized. The direct injection is being sprayed directly in the combustion chamber, and instead of getting an atomization of the fuel, which is like a fog, you're getting droplets. Those droplets go right on the side of the cylinder wall. They combine with that oil, and they, they poof, they, they combust. And it, and it causes an explosion, and this is what the explosion looks like. This here is combustion. See this carbon? This carbon here between the second ring and the top ring, right here, this dark carbon right here. Got a little bit of it here. You had some of it here, you can kind of see where it blew out. And you're getting some here between the second ring and the top ring, this carbon here. This is because oil is coming past that second ring. The fuel droplets combine with that oil and there's an explosion in there and it literally blows metal clean apart. I know it's hard to believe, but that's what's going on here. So three things to avoid this. That, that, if that's not your question, that's, that's the one you should have. First, the right API grade oil. It has to have SP, that's specially formulated for direct injection. The second thing, a fuel additive. And making sure that your injector, the direct injector, is staying as clean as possible so that that fuel going into the cylinder is being atomized, it's like a fog. We'll take you out to the, your yard for a minute. You know that you got a bad sprinkler head when all of a sudden you look at your yard and you're like, wow, man, I got a big old brown spot over there. Well, that brown spot is probably no water getting into it because the sprinkler head's dirty. And instead of sp you know spraying good all around the area where it's supposed to, it's just pissing in one part of it. And that's kind of what a direct injector does when it gets dirty. It just kind of sprays in one area, you don't want that in the cylinder. You want the fuel to be a fog. So that's the second thing, keep the air injector super clean. And the last thing is, warm up the engine. Do not, on a direct injected motor, don't pull out of the driveway and decide, you know, twin turbo BMW, man, you're ready to go. And just like honk on that thing because you want your neighbor to know that you're driving a sweet car. You know, you got to get that oil up to temp so that it's not that low tension second ring isn't allowing the oil to get by it and causing that combustion problem. I'm hoping that helps you guys uh, from coming to see me for this very catastrophic issue. Now I gotta call the customer and give him, it, it could be worse, you know, I don't, he knew that it was bad news, but it's not as bad as $30,000 what the dealer told him. I think we're gonna be able to fix it for quite a bit less. Uh, why don't you put me on speakerphone and we'll kind of go through these. What that is, is that uh, direct injection pre-ignition. Uh, it's caused, it happens during low RPM under a load. A lot of people will blame this on the tune and, it, and it, it, a tune could cause it. Now you just bought this car, so we're taking a lot of things into consideration. I don't know whether somebody's installed a tune or that or not, and you wouldn't either, and I don't get into that. So I wouldn't know to go in and look at it and say, oh yeah, somebody's overwrote this program. I'm a great mechanic, but uh, I have to holler at my 24 year old kid when I need the computer screen to come on and it won't for me or something, you know. Right. Yeah, so this is not uncommon. Uh, and it usually happens, I've seen it on European cars. It's more prone on the European cars. I think because they're turbocharged, they like to go fast. And I don't work on a lot of Japanese stuff, to be honest with you. You know, so maybe, it, maybe it's on those too. But from what I'm seeing, it's on European stuff. What's happened here is the oil and the fuel are combining between the second and the top ring. The compression ring is the one buried at the top. The oil is getting in there. In fact, you can see the carbon in between those two rings. The oil gets by the oil ring, gets by the oil scraper or control ring, and it sits there. And then because the fuel has not atomized correctly, and what I mean by atomization is you almost want like a fog in the combustion chamber. You do not want fuel droplets. I don't know if you've ever had the experience of, of throwing a match into a open container of gasoline, but if it's like a big, you know, one gallon bucket of gasoline and you throw a match in it, it'll put the match out. Unless it's a really hot day because it's the vapors that ignite, not the liquid itself. The job of the injector is to vaporize that fuel. And sometimes that doesn't happen. All these things combined, the wrong oil, the fuel not vaporizing and the oil is thick so it gets built up in there causes this to happen. So that's the piston, okay. that, that's the real damage. The second one is just some things I got in a little uh, cup and that's just pieces of the piston ring and there in little pieces of the piston. The other one is the cylinder wall. I wanted to take a picture of the cylinder wall and these cylinder walls are what they call nickel seal. A nickel seal wall, what it is, it's, it's a silicone impregnated aluminum cylinder wall. It's high tech stuff and you cannot bore and hone it. When I say you cannot, I can bore and hone it. I could cut it, I could do whatever I wanted to to that wall. 
but it wouldn't work right because the silicone particles have to be sit on the top. It's what the rings ride on. They do a lot of it in two stroke and things like that. It makes for a great cylinder wall, but the repair of it in a machine shop like me would be to put cut the whole thing out and put a steel sleeve liner in there. But I'm just telling you this because this motor, if I'm to fix this motor, I can fix that. I'm going to re-ring this motor. That cylinder wall didn't suffer any damage. You got lucky. As, as much as this is going to cost you, you got lucky. Because if that cylinder wall was scratched, it's a whole nether ball game. Do you follow me? Yes, sir. Yeah. The fourth picture there, you'll see just a little, they're just buff marks. They're not really scratches in the surface. I just wanted to really give you a picture of the whole wall. So my suggestion to you here is to fix this, is we're going to re we're, we're going to remove the other cylinder head. I have vacuum check your heads, and the valves are leaking past the seats a little bit. I'm going to recommend a valve job on the cylinder heads, the machining, re, you know, refurbishing the cylinder heads while they're off. I'll have to replace that one piston for obvious reasons. The other pistons will pull out of the motor. We will clean them, soda blast them so they'll look brand new. We'll inspect everything, and then we're going to install new piston rings on all the, the pistons okay. and that's as best and as inexpensive as I think we can do for you to give you a good product so you can get back on the road. We will inspect, we had to pull the timing chains off this motor. The timing chains are at the back of the engine on this. You know, you should look this engine up on the internet or something, man. This is really a bizarre engine. Donald is your service rider. I don't have price quotes yet. They're putting that together for the additional parts and stuff that we're going to need. He will call you here in a little while and give that to you. But I think that if you want to get this motor going, that's the way we can fix it for you. So you think it's possible that they put the wrong oil in there? You, you know, I have no idea. Did you have the oil change recently? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I would imagine the best thing to do, if it was me, I wouldn't particularly call him up and start saying, my engine blew up. I need to know what kind of oil. You, you know, what I would do is I would just say, hey, just for my records, I'd like to know, when you did my oil change and give me, you know, the, your name and all that, so they look it up, say, can you send me the uh, API standards on that oil? I don't know what the API stands for. I'm not going to act like I do. But it's the, <laughs> it's the, A. Let, let me look it up for you while I'm here. Let's just do that. American Petroleum Institute, a new minimum engine oil standard developed to address the critical needs of today's engines, including chain wear, low speed, low speed pre-ignition, and that's what you suffered here, and deposit formation. And then of course, use the correct oil grade, 020 weight. Yeah, buddy, that's like pouring water. <laughs> and there's a reason for that is because your low tension on these rings allow that oil to get up if it's too thick. So I, I would just, get a record of that but any other questions oh, yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to at least know what they yeah the injectors uh, I would start adding a, a, a cleaner to it for a while you know we're, we're going to recommend we're going to replace the injector in that cylinder so that will be in the okay. quote uh, because that's a possibility the injector went bad and instead of item atomizing the fuel and turning it into like a mist or a fog it could have a dirty pintle and it's it's spraying like a bad sprinkler head you know it's just pissing on on one side so we're we will replace that i'll have uh donald include the other five to be cleaned while they're out we can ultrasonically clean them and he'll i'll just have him add that to the bill you can decide what you'd like to do okay is there, is there an additive that you do recommend ams oil makes good I mean, their stuff is great. You know, I really like their stuff. So they do not pay me a dime to say that. Okay. I appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Hopefully you won't fall over and die because this is not going to be cheap, man. This will be the end of this part, but I've given the option, I think, that will work for him and is the most inexpensive. That's kind of what a good machine shop and engine builder can do for people. We, you know, we're here to give options, not just to throw a whole engine in it.